We are at 7.1, bravo. So we talked yesterday, just to briefly recap, about a sales journal and how we're going to shorten this whole process by doing a sales journal and not having to do it all through the general journal. So we're going to build our own sales journal today. Having said that, I'm going to start off with problem 7.1b. We're going to go down to A3 and we're going to do sales journal. I'm on page and I'm going to go to one more. Oh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to wait. I'm just going to put page there. We'll fix that a little bit later. Going to A5. Excuse you. You got it all over me. You're welcome. I'm going to go into B5, Bravo 5. I'm going to put date. I hit tab. Then I hit sales, alt, enter, slip, alt, enter, N-O, nombre, <laughs> tab. The scan is happening right now. All right. Then we're going to do customer's name, alt, enter, and tab. We're going to do post, alt, enter, ref, tab. Accounts, alt, enter, receivable. Alt enter, debit, tab, sales, tax, alt enter, payable, alt enter, credit, tab, and sales, alt enter, credit. We're going to do a series of button clicks right here. I'll pause. We're on page 225. But I'm jumping ahead. We haven't even read the problem yet because I know we're going to be doing a sales journal, so we're going to create one. I know that everybody's looking, but I'm going to just double tap a couple of these bad boys here. In fact, I'm just going to highlight them all. Double tap them so they kind of go out to where they're supposed to be. Oh, that didn't work at all. <laughs> Sales slip number, customer's number, name, post reference, accounts receivable, debit, sales tax payable. Good. That's looking a little bit better. Please, come on up. It's a good place to sit. Back room is never good here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a touch. Now we have our basic building blocks for a sales journal. Kick your leg into that again. I hate that. It drives me crazy. We're good, Mr. Tuck? Okay, go around in a circle. So we're going to go up, down, left, up, down, left, up, right, down, left, up, right, down, left, right, up. <laughs> up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA select start. <laughs> hey, I used that Konami code so many times when I was a kid. Everybody else just thinks it's a line from Wreck It Ralph. No, no, no. I lived it. Okay. So <laughs> then I'm going to go one, enter, two, enter over here in alpha six and seven. I'm going to highlight those with the shift button. I'm going to drag this sucker down until it says Levon. I'm going to let go. I'm going to copy and paste this sucker over on this side. So I have my rows listed. That was nice, wasn't it? Instantaneous over, over. Wait, wait, you go like this. This one? You're going to highlight the bottom right. You're going to highlight those two, and then you drag it down. I'm going to copy the whole thing and move it over here. Control C, Control V, paste. So I, um, I accidentally hit something that turned on this one thing that's reading everything on my screen. 
You've got voice analysis happening? Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. Excel is now reading to me. <laughs> Bag space. <laughs> now it would be really no, it'd be really fun if all of a sudden it's like P O R N. What are you looking for, Nick? Oh. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> like, what are you doing right now? That's blocked. Um, why don't we uh, narrator settings? Exit the narrator. Thank you. Is it? Thank you. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm used to having a. What'd you say? Which box? This one? This box? Well, you just do a one and a two, and you highlight those two, and you drag it down. Bottom right. Okay, we're gonna set this one up. We're gonna take a little bit of time doing it because we're gonna use this one as the basis of all of our problems. Not our personal problems, our accounting problems. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink A. I'm gonna right mouse click it, do a column width. Right now it's at eight. I'm gonna put it like three. That looks good. And I'm going to right mouse click on I, and I'm going to do the same thing, column width, and I'm going to do three, and then enter. And this one, though, I'm going to make this a left justified over here. So it's right up against that line. I like that. Looks good. It's right up against that left line. Our next spot here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight. Um, I'm going to highlight this whole thing. So everything above the top. I'm actually going to highlight all the way down here. I think this will work. So I've highlighted all the way down to 1 past 11. I'm going to go up to this little thing here about borders and lines on the little arrow. Go down to more borders. Here it is. Now, you can't tell, but this is a double. I'm going to click on my double line. I'm going to use that as my top line and all of the lines in the middle. So my vertical lines and the top line. But that's it. That's where I stop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little crazy here. I'm actually going to come over here and get this basic line. I'm going to put that in between. I don't, I'm not going to do it at the bottom because I think it's going to leave my bottom one OK. When I click OK, oh my goodness. It's almost like I've taught this class before. We have a beautiful sales journal grid. I would argue that date needs to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to widen that thing out to, I don't know, 10. Sales slip number doesn't have to be that wide, but I'm going to move it out to 6. Customer name, I'm going to make it 18. Posting reference doesn't have to be big at all, but I'm going to make it a 6. Accounts receivables, deposit, or uh, debit, excuse me. Let's go ahead and make that a 13. It's the devil. Sales tax payable, let's make that one a 13. And sales credit, let's make that a 13. I'm slowly but surely getting there, right? I'm going to highlight that whole header row, and I'm going to center all those names. Man, this is looking good. Great. I'm going to hit, well, you should hit Control S to save this because you're going to want to. I'm just going to delete it and create it again some other time. <clears throat> okay. 
Now we can go to the problem. <coughs> oh, we didn't do the top. Sales journal. Highlight all the way across. Do a merge and center. I'm going to highlight all the way across to here. Not all the way. Do a merge and center. And then a right justify for that page. And that leaves me this little spot right here that I can put the page number in, which they're telling us is eight. Snap! That was awesome. Annette, are you not following us? Or did you already do it? Okay. All right. I'm recording, right? I did hit record. Okay. <laughs> Gulp. All right, so let's go ahead and read. What's the problem? Somebody read me the problem. 7.1b. Ashley, do you have it? Priscilla. How about Priscilla's going to read us the problem? Well, MJ Appliances. Okay, now, <coughs> we're going to work on the problem, but once again, in this class, I don't want you to be thinking about this specific problem, I want you to be thinking about the concept. Without even looking at a problem, I want you to solve, in equation form, what we need to put up here right now, based upon what Priscilla just read. It's going to be... <coughs> Debit minus credit equals sales credit. Okay, we could do that, but let's think about the problem. Read us the problem loud one more time, Priscilla. The whole thing? Yeah. MJ Appliances is a retail store that sells household appliances. Okay, so they're selling household appliances. So we are selling a product. <coughs> There's an 8% sales tax. So, Mr. Tuck, 8%. Okay, what does that mean? How do eight percent of what? Okay, is that what they bought, or is that what they owe us? So do we sales tax what they owe us? So what was the merchandise here? Sales. This is what it is, credit or debit. This is a sales. So whatever we sell, we're going to add 8%, and then they're going to owe us all that money. So it's going to be debit times 0 0.08 equals... Vusa Hall, you're, you're, you're on Jack Tacos. You're so close. But it's not a real taco. Okay, so no. So, all right. I know, I love them too. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bagging on the taco. Our debits have to equal our credits. I get them for premium and I agree. Correct? Debits equal the credits? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know that this is going to be equal to what? <coughs> we know that <coughs> this amount is going to be equal to what? Okay, I'm not, I don't want to hear the word credit at all. We know that the accounts receivables is going to be equal to what? Sales. Sales what? Sales plus sales tax. Perfect. Thank you, Annette. Because these are the two credits. These two numbers together are going to equal this one number. I just had it backwards. Kind of. You had it inverted a little bit. You were adding these two together. But that's all right. You were close. Yeah. Okay. That's why I said so close. But they're fake tacos. Okay. So, so we can write a formula right now before we do anything. Before we do one thing. And I'm going to introduce something new called an absolute formula. Now, they're giving us 8%. And up till now, whenever we move the formula, it moves everything with it. But we have one component that stays the same. What stays the same? 8%. So we want to keep that exactly the same. But what happens if the next problem says 9%? Well, we'd have to go through and we'd have to change everything, all those formulas again. We don't want to do that. We want to make it so the formula is always there. So we're going we're gonna to just pop our little brains open a little bit here. We're going to learn a little new Excel. I'm going to come up here, right above it, and I'm going to put in here point 
08, which is what? 8%. Well, if I hit that percent key, well, that's the dollar key. Boom, 8%. And I'm even going to bring it out two spots so I can see that we have exactly 8%. 0 0.08, enter. And then you go up, you hit that, you go back to it, you hit the percentage key. Got it? Then I put the decimal place out twice, which is this button right here. Are you going to like uh, put that to white and do ghetto? I could. You were in my class? No, but I watched your video. Oh, you watched my ghetto video. Okay, there you go. We, we could do that, but we're not going to turn this into anybody but me, and I'll know what you're doing. So this isn't a report going in. But yes, that's definitely a good idea. Now, we haven't even done a single entry, and I want you to solve all this already. As we put in one number, one number, the sales amount, I want everything to happen automatically. Mm -hmm. so, it's going to be. so how do we figure out our sales tax? What does it equal? Equals GC. OK, so G2. Times sales. Just ditch the credits, everybody. Let's just ditch the credits right now. H6. That's right. We keep saying it. I think H it's messing H6. with our minds. Times H6 or sales. There you go. Great. So we're going to get a number here, and it's going to be based on whatever we get in sales credit. And you know what? I apologize. I'm going to highlight this entire row. And actually, I'm going to highlight all three of these rows. And I'm going to use the comma style. So I just clicked it, so I don't have to keep doing that. So if I put in 50 bucks, oh look, I get $4 of a tax automatically. Now, what did you say? Sure, equals G2, according to mine, times H6, enter. And now whatever I put into H6, if I put $6 in there, it's going to equal 48 cents. If I put $10 in there, it's going to equal 80 cents. It's always doing the math. How can you get the dash if I get a zero? Because you haven't done comma style yet. Gangnam style. Gangnam style. Did it not work? Shift eight, the wild card, yes. Now, my next question is what's the other number we need here? Counts receivables. There you go. It's going to equal this number plus this number. Now we're going to have a problem. Nope, not that, not that problem. I'm going to grab these. I highlighted all three of them. That was a problem. They have a circular formula over there. I don't want you to think about the G's. You're going to add sales tax payable plus sales, and that's going to give us accounts receivables. Right. We're going to fix that. Okay. In F6, you're going to say G plus H. Now, there's going to be a problem. Paul just mentioned it. We're going to find out right now. We're going to highlight these three. And as I drag them down to the bottom, uh-oh, I get this value coming up. Why am I getting a value? I'll tell you why. I'm glad I asked myself this question. If I come down to this one and I hit F2, it shows me that what I'm actually multiplying is this times sales tax payable credit, the term. <coughs> that doesn't work. What's it supposed to be multiplying? 8%. But 8% is up here. <coughs> I'm sorry, I got a frog in my throat. All right, the problem is that we are using what's called in Excel a relative formula, which means it's relative to where it's located. As we move, the formula moves with it, everything that it's calculating. So, the what? Yes. So we're going to come up here to the sales tax payable, and we're going to put a dollar sign in front of the two. <clears throat> You're going to say, Mr. Greer, we need a dollar sign in front of the what? 
G also. But that's not true. We only need it in front of the two because the only thing that we want to keep stable, the dollar sign means absolute. I don't want you to ever move. All we care about not moving is the row. So I'm just going to put it in front of the two, G dollar sign two. And now I'm going to highlight this again and drag it all the way down. And it's going to be perfect. Noise is right. Enter, and then you highlight the three of them, you drag them down. <coughs> now if I come down here and I do $10, and I do $10 here, it's always going to equal because it's always going to 8%. Michael. I'm, I'm going slow. I keep stopping. You tell me what you need. I'll come back. You what? You don't know how to drag them? Do you use, did you use comma style on everything? And what does it look like? Plus this, right? That plus, uh, no, you're multiplying that. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing here? Equals this number times this number and G2 has to have a dollar sign for that. <coughs> Enter. Now, you got this as a percentage, so before we do the whole thing, let's fix this one. Let's make this a dollar sign, or comma style, excuse me. <coughs> now highlight this and then drag that down. <coughs> it looks good. Well, it's recorded on YouTube. It'll be posted. Good? And that's got this all the way done. All right. Now we're going to move on to the problem. The problem in America is taxes. I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> okay. So the problem. Instructions. Open general ledger accounts and enter the balances of the accounts receivables. Record the transactions in a sales journal. We'll do the... We'll do the general ledger stuff later. Record the transactions in a sales journal like the one shown in figure 7.4. Use eight as the journal page number. Ha <laughs> ha, helped us do that already. Total and prove it as of June 30th. So we know that we're gonna start off, our date is 2013. We're gonna start off on June 1st, according to the problem on 226. Let's go ahead and just run around the room. Annette, will you read us the first one? June 1st? Yes. Sold to we, we sold the dishwasher to, did you call him Fatima? Fatima. I'm just kidding. That's Fatima, <laughs> how do you say that? Uh, Faki. Faki. Faki? Issue sales slip 201-410-50-12-84. OK, so the sales slip, let's put the guy's name in first. Oh, the sales slip is 201. Guy's name is Fatmia Fahi. Fahi. Yeah, okay, he's got that. And I'm not going to enter anything over here. I'm just going to go over to the sales number because I did my formula properly. And I'm going to put in $1,050. Hit enter. Oh, look at that. $84 of sales tax automatically calculated. And my balance works because I've just added those two numbers together to make it equal. Sales slip, it's going to be like a receipt number? Correct. Now, we could just go through and input those two things that they gave us in the book. We could go through and we could just enter in the 1050 and the 84 like the book gave us and then do an equals and add those two together. But do you see the concept? I'm trying to help you guys realize how to do this, not just for the book, but for the rest of your life. If you want to do this and you don't want to have to ever figure out anything, we didn't do one piece of math. The computer did all the math. We just had to conceptually figure out what do we want it to do. And as soon as we said, take this times this, add those two things together, bibbity bobbity bacon, we get exactly what the book has. Did you redo the, 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 the tax or the percentage? Yeah, so this is the beauty. Let's say a next 
the next problem we have says it's 10% sales tax. All of a sudden, all my sales taxes all update automatically. And I, I have the, I, all I have to do is go put in sales numbers for that next problem. Well, one cell being different, um, in sales tax, that's never going to be the case. But if it were, if I were making up a, a spreadsheet like that, I would have it reference something just over here to the right, and I would keep it off the page, but I'd put 8%, 8%, 8%, 6% on that one, and I would say equals that percentage that's over there. Because then you're not ever altering a formula. The formula is done. You can reference cells that you put numbers into, and that helps you very quickly get through things. Hope that makes sense. OK, good job, Annette. Uh, Jerry, can you read the next one for us? June 6th. Okay. To Gilbert Gomez. Uh, Gilbert Gomez. Uh, you should sales for 925 Wait, let me guess. I bet it was $74 to sales tax. So that's the sales tax <laughs> How did I know that? Because as soon as I typed it in, the computer did it. And the computer can do 2.4 million math calculations a second. So it's faster than you can even read it. It can think of it as soon as I type it in. So it might have taken us a few minutes to set this up, but we're going to get our homework done really quick now. And the test and every Oh, man, Mr. Greer, you were amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome, you guys. Yeah. What was that? I just want five words from you. And those five words are nice. I can find an iPhone anywhere. OK, uh, Mr. Tuck, you, you want to read us the next one? <laughs> he got ripped. $2,500. Better be like an 80 inch curved screen OLED or something like that. I remember when tube televisions were the thing. <laughs> All right, I'm getting old. Tapes, vinyl records, yeah. eight tracks, flip phones, mm -hmm. floppy disks, <laughs> floppy disks. Yeah. all that stuff. All right, Priscilla. Oh, wait, you already read first. Kevin. Netscape. Right. Yeah. Um, June 17th, Odom electricity dryers to Betty Odom. Odom. Issued sales slip 204 for 850 plus sales tax, $68. Bang, done. Now, you guys know about tab and shift tab, or no? Tab takes me to the right, shift tab takes me to the left. Mm -hmm. Tab is like Destiny's Child. Shift tab is like Beyonce, to the left, to the left. No. Back and forth. Then we hit enter, it just takes you back down there. I like it. Because if I hit tab and shift tab, when I hit enter naturally, when I come over here, it'll take me to exactly where I want to be in the next one. All right. Um, Nick, would you mind, uh, new, uh, newly haircut Nick, would you mind reading us the next one? 23 June. June 23. Slip 205. Slip 205. Young, E-V-I-E, Y-L-G-O-T. Um, and then $500 in the bank. Isn't that awesome how it just does it? Paul, right. take us to June 27th. Sold living room sofa and four chairs to Paul Rivera. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Issued sales slip, 1606. 1606? 1606, sales slip uh, for 2,500. Wait, it says 206. Oh, oh that's a different one. Oh, that's the second one. No, it looks like uh, sales 27. That's, that's uh, 27. Oh, you're, you're on the wrong problem. Oh. <laughs> What's going on here? He's like, why are they all 1600s? That's so which? 
This one right here. Oh. John 127? Yep. Uh, sold portable color TV to John Junyi. Junyi. Sales slipped to 06 for 1,200. Okay. And I got all these numbers wrong. <laughs> Looking at the wrong freaking slide. He's like, I don't know what they're all doing, but they're all crazy. I'm going to have this done in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> they're all whacked. <laughs> all right, Michael T2, give me a uh, June 29th. Tai Long. Tai Long. Tai Long should slip to 07 for 1325 plus sales tax of 106. Done. I just type in that sales number. Boom. Anybody go see Teenage Mutant Ninja Trolls yet? When he's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a funny part of the movie. <laughs> they're getting ready to fight Shredder, and they're all getting pumped up. <laughs> all right, June thirtieth. Is that it? I'll do this one. June thirtieth. We're selling to Ana Carreras. Carreras. All right, what, how do you say that? Como se dice, Aina? Kevin? No, no, the first first name. Aina? Aina? Is that a Hispanic name? But Carreras is, right? Okay, 208. Come over here, and we're going to put in 150 bucks. Oh, $12 of sales tax. So done quickly. This is why I love accounting. Because I got really, I was already good at Excel, so I could do all my homework really quick, and everybody was always mad. But I'm hoping to teach you how to do your homework quick, because I think it'll make you that much more effective when you leave here. All right, now we have to total these suckers up. So let's go ahead and run a totals. We're going to do an equal sum. Parentheses of everything above it. Got that one. I'm going to copy and just paste it over. Actually, I don't like that what happened. It killed my formatting. I don't know why. Mine didn't work. That was weird. I should be able to just grab it and take it over, right? Why can't you just do on sales page sum of all those numbers and then it automatically does it because we have the formula for that? I'm sorry, what was it? You were saying, why couldn't we do what? Just take the sum, because all I did was the sum from here, and then it automatically did that for me. You know, Paul, sometimes you impress me, and that was a good one. You could do that. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this sucker. Did everybody understand what Paul did? He was saying, since we already have the formula there, why don't we just take the sum of this side right here, hit enter, and all of them will automatically go there. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> I want you guys to see TV intros about my girlfriend. No, <laughs> sorry. It's got some funny one-liners in there. All right. Excelente. So we've got that done. Now we have to put them into a uh, general ledger. What we're going to do is we are going to take our break and we're going to come back and do our three ledger entries and then we'll do the next problem, okay? So everybody take a break. I'm going to pause YouTube. All right, we're going to do a general ledger. Does anybody have a general ledger saved from the last one? I think I just killed mine. So sad. Does everybody have your last chapter? Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying you guys pull it out. I'll get mine. Okay. 
whatever you have the assignment with, with Fletcher's, because I'm just going to copy it and paste it back into this one. Yes, you only need three of them. Wow, that is a huge general ledger I just pasted in. You know, all the account ledgers that we had? Oh, yeah, never mind. So our general ledger accounts. We're going to be dealing with three accounts. What three accounts are we going to be dealing with, everybody? Perfect. <coughs> All right. So we're going to come over here. We're going to put our first one in is accounts receivables. What number is that one? It tells us in the problem, doesn't it? What account number? 111. Zoom out a little bit here. All right, so we're going to have June 1st. <clears throat> we're going to bring over our balance. In the accounts receivables, is it a debit or a credit balance? Debit balance. How much do we start with? According to the problem, 73000 Now, I'm going to zoom way out, so it might be hard to see this. I can't even read it now. But what we're going to take over here is, on June 30th, our balance, or our end of the month, excuse me, from S8, is going to come over. It's an accounts receivables debit. I'm just going to say equals this total right here. Equals the total. And I'm going to say this amount equals the 7,300 plus the debit minus credit, which leaves us with 8,280. I got the 9,180 from my accounts receivables in that sales journal we just did. Then I just carried the balance over here. I'll zoom in now. There. So I took this 73,000, that was our bad getting balance right here. And on this balance, I just added the 9180 to it. So equal 82,180. Whoops. Oh, it's jumping all over the place here. There we go. Now I can read it. Zoom out a little bit. Yours doesn't look like that? Your general ledger doesn't look like that. What does it look like? Not that. Is it not Date. 
actually we're pretty close. Account, account number, date, description, post reference, debit credit, debit credit. You just read the exact same thing to me. Is it pink? <laughs> like, what do you mean it looks different? Okay, it's, it's the exact same thing. We're just, this is a really nice one that I've made up. So, you know how you dress sharp? My Excel's nice and sharp, okay? <laughs> Yours is, you know, me with a buzz cut doing my hair. Mine is Kevin in the morning doing his hair. You know, Got to make it look good. So. All right, let's go down to the next one. <clears throat> What's our next account? Sales tax payable. What's the account number? 231? Did we have a balance? Nope. So we're just going to start off with June 30th. Our end of the month comes from S8. Is it a debit or a credit? It's a credit. No one's answering. It's right here. Sales tax payable credit. Click on it. Hit enter. Zoom out a little bit again. And so we're going to have a credit balance of just this. Super hard. And finally, our last account was sales. Account number 401. <laughs> it's everywhere. Did we have a balance? Nope. So we're just going to say June 30th. What was our credit amount? I'm going to slide myself over here. Say we did 8,500 in sales. And it has a balance of 8,500. Post reference is S8. The final piece <coughs> of this. We've left off one step. And that is to go back. And we indicate that we have done it, that we've posted everything by putting in the bottom here. The way I like to do this is parentheses, one, space, one, space, one, end parentheses. The reason I put the space in there is if I don't, it thinks I'm trying to do a calculation and it'll freak out. So you put the space in there, it becomes text. Parentheses, two, space, three, space, one, parentheses. Parentheses, four, space, zero, space, one, close parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and center those just to make them look right. <clears throat> and I'm done with the problem. Are those, the account numbers? those are the account numbers. That's how we bring that back here. So 401, back to here. 231, hello. hello. Back. That was on a return. And we'll get to that, I think. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. A little bit. Was that all done or hold on? Okay. Good? We're all ready? <clears throat> I'm still waiting. YouTube lets me load two hours. I, I'm good to go.
A. But we're not coming in with it pre-done. So we're not coming in with it pre-done. But if you did what I did, watch. I'm going to come over here. If I was to start changing all these and put like 2560, 7580, notice that everything over here on the right, all my ledgers are all done because I've been referencing. So it pulls the right number over right off the bat. I mean, you could probably get done with your test in five minutes if you've done what I've just done. And that will make, that'll just warm my cockles. We ready? Oh, I'm going to go down here and label this one 7.1B. <clears throat> Oops, B is lowercase. I don't like that. All right, so we're going to go on to 7.2B. I'm going to right mouse click, say move or copy on that little tab down at the bottom. I'm going to create a copy. And I'm going to put it before sheet two. Click OK. All my stuff is here. Problem 7.2b. I'm going to zoom in a little bit now because we're going to focus in on this. I know that this is all going to be different. I don't know if I'm going to have more, but we'll keep that there for right now. I deleted everything. Let's go ahead and read number two. Annette, will you read it to us? Number two, the instruction part? Sure. Well, the, the furniture lot. Wait, 8%. Same amount, correct? How did you move the, how did you copy the sheet? Right click, move or copy. Create a copy. Put it in front of sheet two. Good? Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, so 8%, keep going. So we have some balances and we have some returns and allowances. When they say returns and allowances, what do we know we're going to have to add to this? Thank you. Good job, Annette. You're always, you're always there for me when I need you to. Okay. <coughs> Priscilla, you could be if you sat up front. She's so quiet back there. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's jump into this. Uh, Paul, why don't you read us the first one? We're on your favorite page now, 227. Sold the living room sofa. To Wait, what date? For June 1. June 1. Sold living room sofa to Kenya Jackson. Issue sales slip 1601 for 2525 plus sales tax. I mean, look at that. This is done. Dang! Is it working? Michael T2, can you read us number two on 227? Wait, what's the date? Sold three recliners to Carmen Cruz. Issued sales slip 1602 for 1,000 bucks. Plus sales tax of 125. 
I like it. I mean, it's almost unfair how easy this homework is. I think we should do extra problems. For extra credit? No, just for credit. <laughs> Kevin, take us to the hard one. Oh, you know what? We're going to come back to all the returns. How about that? I'd rather go through all the stuff that's not a return, and then we'll come back and revisit that at the end. So jump to the next one. So June 17th, sold a living room table and location to Rick Jones. Issue sales slip, 1504 for $4,000, plus sales tax for 320 4000 <laughs> Can I tell you a funny story about my personal life while you guys are all gathering it together? So my wife went off on vacation for three or four days to her grandma's house, or it was a week. And I wanted a new TV, a Bose system, and, you know, upgrade everything. So I went down to Jerome's and bought all new living room furniture. Got it all installed. Put the Bose system up. <laughs> got everything done. She came home. She's like, wow, we got a whole new living room. Yes, we did. <laughs> Had to change the furniture so she didn't think I just wanted the TV. So, <laughs> Come on, that's brains right there. So, <laughs> she's like, what are these things on the walls? Oh, those are speakers for the surround sound. They came with the furniture. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, yes. So just food for thought when you guys are in that situation. All right, Nick, what do you got for us? June what? 23rd, I think. Who do we sell it to? Dimitri. And it was for how much? 24? 24. Leroy Jenkins, though. No? Ken, can you read us the next one? Oh, not the 25th. Let's go to the 27th. I mean, it's almost like we can't read the problem by the time it's done. Yeah, we're going to go back because those are returns. Ashley, you ready? And finally, Hatless Nick. We're on the 30th. already up there. He looked up like, how do you get it done all? He's reading it. I'm typing it. Poof. Now, I'm going to look down because this book is pretty cool. Check this out. It's already saying 111, 231, and 401 as all the accounts. I've already, already got all those numbers in there. Perfect. In fact, because I was so brilliant and I did it my way, I'm going to come over here. Look at this. All my numbers have actually transferred over. Now we just have to make sure we didn't have balances ahead of time because my initial balance for accounts receivables wasn't 73,000 this time. It was 24,150. 
add my sales tax payable, this time had a balance, which it didn't before. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to change this one. So I'm going to say June 1st. <coughs> this is a balance that came over of uh, 45.15. So I'm going to have to redo this one for June 30th. Actually, I think we're going to do a couple things in between. I'm just going to leave that one blank for a second. Let's go back and do our uh, descriptions and our general journal stuff because we had, I believe it was th two returns, three returns. And this is your one with the number and the slash and the, and the check mark that you were asking about. So if we have returns like we did in this one, does everybody have a general journal they can go copy and paste in? We should have done general journals. Is that chapter three again? Yep. Let's go out and find that one again. Somebody has a fancy general journal ready to go here. Didn't work. Well, let me say paste. Oh no, 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 no. Don't do this to me, Excel. <coughs> I just freaked Excel out. Whew. Okay. I was getting a little worried there for a second. Boom. There we go. <coughs> Paste it in everything. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so our first return was on what date? June 11th. It was. For accept a return of a damaged chair from Carmen Cruz. The chair was originally sold on sales slip 1602 on June 5th. <coughs> issued a credit memorandum <coughs> 215 for $540, which includes sales tax of 40 bucks. Which is wrong because did the math because it said 42. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Or do their sell out to me? equals 540 times 0 0.08. Where is it? Oh, no, which includes $40 in sales tax. So it would be 500. No, it's 540 with 40 of it being sales tax, 500 of it. So you're going to it's going to look something like this, except I think I got this backwards. I did, I got those backwards. It's gonna be 500 over here, 40 over here, and then we're gonna have 540 on this side. That will equal. So we've got this. Now we're looking at the different accounts that we're gonna be dealing with. The first one, do we put any return back into sales? What do we put in a net? No, returns. There you go, she's got it. Sales returns and allowances. And I have that indented, I shouldn't. Now what was the other thing, if we go over here, we're, we always start with our debits first. So what are the two things that we're gonna be debiting? 
We're not going to debit sales because we don't ever do that. <clears throat> we're just going to put it in the sales returns allowances. So we've already taken care of this one. What's the next one we're supposed to do? Thank you for looking at the bouncy little thing. Sales tax is correct. So we'll do sales tax payable. And finally, what's getting credited? Accounts receivables. Receivables. And it's for Carmen Cruz, because it's specifically that person. So how much is going back? $500. 40 of it was sales tax. This is going to equal the 500 plus the 400. which is 540. We're going to put down here in a little description something like uh, returned, uh, what happened this one, damaged chair from uh, credit memo 215, original sales slip, 1602. Good. Just give a little description of what's going on there. I'm going to indent this a little bit more so we know it's a description. There we go. Now, this could be one thing. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to just highlight this sucker because I just got a lot of nice formatting done. I'm going to paste it right here because we had another one on June what? So sales returns allowances. Who was it this time, though? Dave what? Dave Rick Jones. Rick Jones. Oh, Dave Rick. Gave Rick. <laughs> so it was for Rick Jones. We, what was the problem with this one? Issued credit memorandum 215 for 270. But it was damaged what? Bookcases, I think. Two sixteen. Two sixteen. And what was his original sales slip number? And how much? So now we're going to go ahead and just do our general ledgers. These are going to be a little more complicated general ledgers because we have all these returns and everything going on. So I'm going to come back over here. Now remember, anything that's in this journal needs to be posted to a ledger. And how do we know it's posted to a ledger, Nick? We're going to put the number in the posting reference. And in fact, one of them we're going to put a slash and check mark by to indicate that we did that. So let's go ahead and come back on over here. Our first account is accounts receivables. Our balance was on June 1st. We have this June 30th number, but the problem with this number is that did anything else get affected, or did accounts receivables get affected in between? We have it twice here. Two times we had accounts receivables get affected. So on the 11th and the 25th, they're gonna have to go in there. I, my stinking computer will scroll this direction, but not the other way. <laughs> Two fingers drives me crazy. So we're going to do the 11th, we're going to do the 25th, and then we'll do the 30th, because we know that those are going to be all of our dates. Whoops. So on the 11th, what happened? It was $540 that came out of this. Is it a debit or a credit? 
On the 11th, is account payable a debit or a credit? It's a credit. So we're going to say over here $540. It automatically calculated. It's good. On the 25th, is it a debit or a credit? And that's for two, 270. Whoops, I did these in the wrong spot. Sorry, this one should be 540, 270. <coughs> Finally, at the 30th, <coughs> taking it from our other uh, journal, we had this transfer in, this 25,000, which leaves us with a total balance of 48,477. I have the answer key, that is correct. Does that make sense? Or how about, does that not make sense to anyone? You added wrong. Are you sure you used 540? 270. Did you start off at 24, 150? I knew there was a problem. Now we're going to do the same thing to sales tax payable because we had all those same conditions because returns were all affected there. So we're going to go ahead and say June 1st, June 11th, June 25th, and June 30th. Our balance started as 45.15. On the 11th, did we debit or credit sales tax payable? Did we debit or credit on the 11th? Sales tax payable. Hmm? Debit. We debited it. So let's go back and put it in there. It's debit of, I'm going to go ahead and just say equals 40 bucks. In fact, since I'm here, I'm just doing a shortcut. I'm just going to say equals, go get this other one because I know I'm doing these entries. Here's $20 from the other one. Now we have to make this balance out. We also had a credit from the end of the month, sales tax payable credit right here of 18. So I've pulled those from all the different locations. Now we just need to make this balance work. So what's my formula for the balance, Kevin? Equals what? Why? It's going to equal what we started with. Plus or minus the debit. Minus the debit. What if we have a credit? Plus the credit. Enter. Then I can just grab this one and drag it down twice. Equals 63.17 is our balance. Anybody disagree? Because if you do, you added wrong. Our sales, guess what? It's the same thing. There's no adjustments to sales because we have sales, uh, sales returns allowances. But because we have sales returns allowances, we're going to have to put one more ledger in here. And that one last ledger, I'm just going to copy sales returns or sales. Um, you know what? Yeah, this one's fine. Copy. So this one is sales, returns, and allowances. It's account number 451. It has no balance, but it does start on the 11th because that was the first date that we had. And is sales returns allowances debited or credited? Debited. 
debited. We're just going to come back down here. The cops are here for us all. On the debit side, we're going to say equals. Enter. And then on the 25th, we had another one equals. Two fifty equals five hundred equals the five hundred plus the debits minus the credits. Whew. And we are done. So before we leave today, we have five minutes. What I'd like you to do is copy, save this, definitely save this. In fact, I, I should save it right now. I know this one's going to come back to bite me. I'm going to need it. So let's copy 7.2b, move and copy it, create a copy, go before sheet three. You have three minutes to do. Not the rest of it. I just want to see you do the sales journal to number three. Three minutes. Go. Duplicate it. Start typing in your numbers. I want to see if you can get it done. You can do it in three minutes. No, I haven't even input any of that information. I've been making letters and journals. What information? Any You've got your sales journal. All I have is a sales journal. That's all I want. All I want is a sales journal. And put it where? I want you to do 7.3. As a sales journal in three minutes. You just spent 30 seconds arguing with me. Just do a sales journal. You're okay. <clears throat> so copy it over, paste it in, duplicate it, do whatever you got to do. I want to see you do it for 7 3. <clears throat> Go ahead and pause this. <clears throat> 